the two teams are out on the ice preparatory to the start of the game the Czechoslovakia national team to our left in blue and Team Canada in the white uniform with the red maple leaf they're being introduced now Foster, we might comment right now that both teams, due to an agreement before the game, are dressing 20 skaters and two goaltenders. It's going to be... Coach Harry Sinden has selected for Team Canada. Many of the players who have not had a chance to play too much in these games over in Europe so far. From the number of police that are in this uh, building, it looks as if they are rather expecting a rough one, Brian. Well, maybe they're watching the game from Moscow. Everywhere you look, they're policemen, and then the white helmets that stand out. We have quite a Canadian representative group here. Just to our left, about three or four hundred, and to our right, another couple of hundred. Some of the players who won't be playing for Team Canada are Paul Henderson, who suffered a groin injury uh, after scoring that spectacular goal. A great ovation for Stan Makita. And incidentally, Brian, he's the acting captain for the uh, Team Canada tonight. A chance goes up for Stan Makita. He's carrying the flowers, too. Ronnie Ellis won't be playing. Jean Rattel, Raj Gilbert are just a few of the players who will not be in this game. Guy Lapointe. Gary Bergman.
And there's Santa Claus. A start in goal for Canada. And Holacek is the goalkeeper for Czechoslovakia. But there's so many changes in the two lineups, uh, particularly Canada's lineup, that uh, it will almost look, be like seeing us the uh, Canadian uh, second edition. Well, Foster, Team Canada should have the advantage in this game of both conditioning and game experience. For although the Czechoslovakians have been practicing, this is only their third game. However, I might add, if Team Canada takes this game lightly, they could be in for a big surprise tonight because this Czechoslovakian national team is the reigning world amateur championship team having defeated the Soviets right here in this building last April. The uh, Czechoslovakian team all in blue with the uh, red trim, so they'll be dark on the screen, and the uh, Canadian team in white. And we're just waiting for the... Uh, Stan Makita apparently is going to start at center ice for Canada. Cardoye on the right wing. Frank Mahovlich on the left wing. Brad Park is on the far wing. And the... Uh, apparently the two Hollicks are going to start with Kopach as the forward line for the Czechoslovakians. And their defense is Makach and Pospis. Pospisil. The puck is cleared quickly in on the wing by Kopach. And he failed to get a shot as the puck rolled wide of the net. Canada failed to get out on the first try. The puck is shot out. Talon is on the defense with Park for Canada. And it's over on the far wing to Hollick. He cleared it into the corner to Erie Hollick, who was covered by the Canadian defense. Brad Park is coming over on the left wing. His pass is blocked and shot into the corner by Pospisil, a defense player, playing up for the Czechoslovakians. Talon, back to his own goal, number 32 for Canada, fired a shot that was knocked down. Hollick touched it, and Stan Makita for Canada at center ice, over to Park. Park going in on the right wing, back to right in... On the goal there, the shot was very weak. Two players go down in the corner. Now Mahovlich gets a drive and bounce in front of the net, a shoving duel, and they start to climb a bit, and the crowd seem to be all ready for some extra exci excitement, along with the police, who are heavily armed, it appears, for the occasion with nightsticks. Buster, I might comment on this rink here. Although it's the same measurements as in Moscow, 30 meters wide by 60 meters long, the goal crease is 15 feet from the backboard. So that means it's only 55 feet from the blue line to the goal mouth. So anytime you're over the blue line, you can get a good shot. Phil Esposito got the puck back there. The long shot was handled easily by Halicek. The puck is in the Czechoslovakian zone. No score in the game. And they've played a minute and 19 seconds as they jam into the corner. A puck is Cashman failed to center it out. The Czech Slovakians carry in on the left side. Nedomatsky cleared his spot of the goal, and the puck is knocked to the side. That is a close call. They center it, and it goes over on this wing with Nedomatsky losing it. Here's a shot. And that drive by Kokka was wide of the mark. The puck is back at center. Another try. Suzella fired it wide of the goal from a long way out. Savard is starting back for Canada at the blue line. Going to center ice. Keeps on going. And the pat relay pass was intercepted by Domanski. And Domanski was skated off. And the puck goes into the Canadian zone. Esposito playing it over on this wing. As Canada clear from well out, it's back of the goal. They jam there. Parisi was back of the net but couldn't get the puck. And back comes Czechoslovakia, that far wing, as they start changing on the goal. It was offside and called at practically at center ice. So that Sparta, Stastny, and Martinek will be out there for Czechoslovakia now. My comment as well, Foster, is that the Czechoslovakian team, they play in units of five. They always have their forward line and the two defensemen together. Bubla and Horoshovsky 
are on the defense and move up promptly as the puck is cleared in the Canadian zone. No score in the game. They played 241 of the first period. And 15,000 fans here are really looking for all kinds of action. Peter Mahovlich trails Dion. Dion going in with the puck, fired wide, and bounced off a leg. The puck goes into the corner. They tried to set her out. Goals where they was standing by as Dion had Staste covered in that corner. And the faceoff is going to be to the left of the Czechoslovakian goal. There's no score. And there's the 301 mark of the first period here in Prague. Canada playing every man up. Glenny is at the point there. He waits. Czechoslovakians carry back to center ice. A long shot. A long driving shot by Horshovsky. Got a roar from the crowd. Canada come right back at center ice. Lob it over the line. But there has been too much system so far in the game. Horoshofsky is on the move again, passing on the right wing at center ice. Farda cleared it into the corner and has called for icing and is being brought back. Bata, Rudolf Bata, who handled some of the games in Moscow, is the referee. Philippe and Prozac are the two linesmen. So Canada won their point in this case by having a referee and two linesmen, and they're all from Czechoslovakia. Face-off will be to the right of the Czechoslovakian goal. With the score, Canada nothing and Czechoslovakia nothing. This is game nine with Team Canada. Uh, Dennis Hull had a shot on goal. It was stopped by Holacek. Now the Czechoslovakians try to get that puck out. They're back of their own goal. McCotch and Plaskosil are the defense. Klopach, Hollick, the two Hollicks are out there. And a long pass to Klopach failed to reach them. Canada come back with Dennis Hull, clearing back to Clark. Clark gets turned around. Callum couldn't get hold of the puck. It's still at center, recovered by Canada. Dennis Hull missed the pass from Clark. Back on the right side for Klopach. And it was offside at Canada's blue line. Klopach with the two Hollick brothers, Yuri and Ler Yaroslav, number five and number 20. Yaroslav Hollick, the elder brother, at 30 years old. And over the years, the last eight or nine years, they have been the top two players for the Czechoslovakian national team. Yaroslav Hollick is number five. The other brother is 20. The puck is back at center ice. It's cleared back to the defense. Now they're starting to move up at center on a clearing pass on the left wing. Forced into the corner without even a shot. Talon handled Prosvacil very well. And now Dennis Hull coming down on the left wing, cleared ahead, and a, a collision right by the board as McCosh blocked the Canadian player as he tried to go in. Redmond. Now Canada coming back again. Park goes on into the corner, trying to set her out in Czechoslovakian territory. Still has it. Back to the blue line. Cardoye back to Park. Park comes over in front, took his shot. It was weak and shot down the ice. It's not going to slide the rest of the way. And the Czechoslovakians and Canada change on the go. Canada attacking. Dennis Hull gets his shot. It bounced off Holacek. They go into the corner. The puck is cleared right out to center when Makita couldn't keep the puck in there. Now it's another try as Ori on the Canadian defense failed to get a shot. The puck is back at center ice. Nedobetsky couldn't get past center. They go in on that far side. There's a jamming session. Puck goes into the corner and out in front of the net, but Czechoslovakia recovers. Back to center ice, going in with Palacek. He passed in front. It was blocked easily by Savard. Makita from the corner, trying to get it to Cornwall. It's intercepted. A weak shot. Now another try, and it goes wide as Kotka had a try for Czechoslovakia. They keep it in, but they're not the passing play that the Soviets showed in that eight-game series. 
Nikita at center. Drives it into the corner. Frank Mahovlich in front to Makita, who couldn't handle it. Another try is wide of deflection. Went right in front of the goal. Makita just deflected that and off the target. They keep it in with Ori shooting it back to the net. It's recovered. Bednar tried to get away the defense player, and he failed. Nedobanski is trying it now as the Czech Czechoslovakians change. A clearing pass on the left wing, a long shot. It's left in front of the net as the line is now Martinek, Sparta, and Stasty with Sparta at center ice for Czechoslovakia. The Czechoslovakians coming in on that far side. A long drive by Stasty was handled neatly in goal there. The Czechoslovakian player went down, went checked on that last play. He went down very easily, and it looks like the first penalty of the game as Sesti uh, was bowled over, and Canada will get a penalty. With the score, Canada nothing, and Czechoslovakia nothing. This is game nine with T at 12.48 for what appeared to be a cross-check, and the Czech Czechoslovakian player went down and stayed down. So that Canada will serve the first penalty, which isn't very unusual. They rag the puck in their own zone. A long pass to Sealing went astray. They're coming in on that left wing with a pass that goes wide. Pollock centered right in front, and it went right past the player, went down the ice. So that Czechoslovakia tried again, clearing it from center ice. It's Sealing going in back of the net. Clark is out there to kill off the penalty. Savard, or uh, uh, rather, uh, Parisi is on the forward line. Parisi left that puck for Esposito. Bill Esposito goes up over the line, cleared on the right side to Ceiling, who's out there with Brian Glenny. There's another penalty call coming up. The referee gets the Czechoslovakian player for interference. And uh, now there'll be five aside with the score Canada nothing and Czechoslovakia nothing. This is game for interference. And the face-off will be to the left of the Czechoslovakian goal. Pospisil tried to cover up on that first play. And the play was stopped. Hollick, number 20, that's Erie Hollick. Uh, is ready to take the face off with Bill Esposito of Canada. Can to get the draw. Savard gets his shot. He scores! Savard caught that top right hand corner with a bullet drive, and Canada takes the lead. Savard let that one go from the blue line at 8 19 of the first period, and it was in the net. The goalkeeper didn't even see it. Right off the face off to Brad Park. Now Savard walks right in, a high rising shot. Holacek, well back in the net, didn't have a chance on it. Canada takes the lead. Canada won. Czechoslovakia, no score. Savard scoring on a long shot. No one is there to uh, interfere or even block the uh, goalkeeper's view. Holacek wasn't even covering that side of the net. From the face-off, the puck goes back to Canada's blue line. Sealing played it on the left side to Glenny. It's over on that far side as Cashman tried to go in. He goes to the corner. Esposito shooting it back to the goal. He's back of the net with McCosh, the defense player, playing it ahead to Hollick. He failed to get past center ice. And it's very noticeable to see the difference between the Czechoslovakian attack and the Soviet attack. The, the uh, Czechoslovakians are playing a similar game to Canada. Not much passing. Here's Esposito getting a shot, and it bounced off Holacek and went to the side. Buster, I might comment on the Czechoslovakian style. I think that the Czechs play the closest game to the Canadian style of hockey in Europe or in the Soviet Union. And this Czech team uh, is a little rusty. I don't think they look quite so 
so sharp. They have been practicing, I understand, for close to a month, but they've only had three exhibition games against East Germany, and I think it, it's telling a tale out there so far in the game. They look a little shaky. They've played nine minutes of the first period. Canada leading 1-0, a goal by Savard. Right from the blue line. Puck is at center ice. Kotka is forced back. Still five aside. The puck is at center now. Grabbed off by Park. Cleared on the left wing with a backhand. Dion failed to get it away with any drive. A return rush. Adds goals where they came back to check the player and is going to get a penalty as a result. A hooking penalty to Goldsworthy of Canada. With the score, Canada won and Czechoslovakia no score. This is game nine with Team Canada from Prague. The puck is cleared into the uh, Czechoslovakian zone. Nedabanski was going to uh, come back with it, but it's called for icing. Canada have a man in the penalty box and the, uh, they're five aside. That's uh, Cocteau's number eight. And Nedabetsky is number 14 for the uh, Czechoslovakian national team. Kuzela and Bednar, the defense playing up. Now then the uh, Canadian player is coming over Park to the penalty box to find out how much time is left. I might comment on number 14, Black Cloud Nedamansky, 28 years old, and Foster, when he's right, he's probably one of the best hockey players in all of Europe. Very much, he's always been equated to being another Frank Mahovlich, and he's the Frank Mahovlich of Europe. When he's right, he's as good as there is. Well, Brian, Frank Mahovlich is out there now for... Uh for Canada on the left side with his brother Peter. There's a shot that hit a leg and it was Nedabanski that let it go. They're holding it on the far side in the Canadian zone over by the Canadian bench. It's one nothing for Canada and another change of players. Because the Czechoslovakians aren't that sure uh, of the style that the Canadians are playing, because of course this is the first time they've met the Canadian professionals, it looks like they're just a little hesitant to bump it up along the boards. They're not quite sure yet what to expect from Team Canada, and I think they'll loosen up as the game goes along. Bubla and Horoshovsky are now on the Czechoslovakian defense as the puck comes back at center. McCarch has now taken over on the right defense, number four. Up to center, ice now for Czechoslovakia with Pass going into the corner, far to centers one in front of the net, just as Martinek was standing right to the side. And that was a good save on that part by Ken Dryden, who hasn't been tested very much so far in the game. And they played 10-10 of the first period with Canada leading one to nothing. A long shot by Savard at 8-19 of the first period to give Canada the one-goal lead. Now Clark comes out with Parisi as a forward line to try and kill off this penalty. Martinek, Varda, and Strasny are out there for Czechoslovakia. The puck is back at the blue line. Bubla and Horoshovsky are the defense. It's into the corner. Pass back to the blue line. Bubla took his shot. It stopped. And it goes to the corner as Czechoslovakia put on some pressure for the first time. A roller is in front of the defense, and Canada shoot it down the ice. Puck going to one side of the Czechoslovakian goal. It was Ori that drove it away. Ori's on the left defense. Here they're coming again down the right side. It's Matt Martinek going back of the goal, number 10. Martinek stands there, cleared it back near the blue line on the left side. The shot is made, and another save. Another good one by Dryden, who seemed to back up on that one and uh, stopped it almost on the goal line as he nearly fell into the net. Puck is shot down the ice. Bubla goes back to get it. Here he comes down the far side, a long shot off the boards behind the net. Grabbed off by Parisi, 22 for Canada. Helped 
by Savard, who starts out on the right side, stopped. Now, going to try it again, nearly was caught, played it out to center, goes where he's on for Canada, goes where he goes in on the right side after picking up a loose puck, goes into the corner, is bumped on the boards. It's held back to the net as Holacek went down to cover. 11.41 left, or rather played in the first period. Very much like the Soviet team when the Czechoslovakian team does get puck control on the power play. They try to set up establishing that good control in the offensive zone before they get their chance on goal. And they'll put one man going through the slot area or right across the goal mouth as they did on Dryden there once. The two Holics and Klopach are out there for Czechoslovakia. Glenny was off stride and lost the puck. Recovered immediately. Dennis Hall was racing in there on the far side. Cornwallie tried to pass to him. And back came Kaplatz, but couldn't get very far. Canada attacking. It's Cornwallie set right in front. Oh, and Stan Makita tipped that one. It was just stopped right on the doorstep. Another pass in front. Dennis Hull backhanded one. And it was blocked by the defense. But the Canadian team seemed to be just coasting along there on, without any undue pressure so far. Dennis Hull dropped that pass. Glenny fired a long shot. And he moved up from the defense. Czechoslovakia tried to get going. They seemed rather rusty, though. And the puck was blocked at center ice by Makita. Down that far wing... A bump at the defense. Dennis Hull couldn't get the pass from Glenny. A long sweeping pass to the far side to Yaroslav Halleck. And it's offside in front of Canada's bench. Team Canada Foster seems quite relaxed so far in this game. It seems like all these players are out here enjoying playing the game. And I think, of course, some of the games in, in Moscow, there was such intense pressure on them that most of them are relaxed out here. And they look like they're just going to have a good time tonight. And and play a good game, but play a relaxed game. 12.53 played in the first period. They usually uh, have the clock uh, going in reverse uh, in here in Prague until you get used to it. It's now Park coming up at center ice. A long shot. And it was held there easily by Holacek. Uh, a long shot there with not much to it. Talon, Dale Talon is now on the... Uh, Canadian defeat, uh, defense with Park. Peter Mahovlich, number 20 for Canada, on the left side. Goldsworthy on the right, Dion at center. Down the right wing, a long pass, stopped by Park. Cleared over to Dion, who was tripped on that play by Bednar. The play goes right on. And it's Czechoslovakia on the attack. One man at center, ice going in, cocked to was stopped easily without having a shot, and Park cleared it around on the far side. Goals where they fell when he tried to get away. It's intercepted by Park, given to Peter Mahovlich, going in on that right side, and he was stopped at the defense. The Blue Shirts come right back to the blue line. Nedobatsky couldn't get any farther. Peter Mahovlich carries back, drills what he scores! Peter Mahovlich beats. Holacek with a long drive from the left wing. And it's 2 nothing for Canada. Peter Mahovlich just let the shot go. And it was in the net. Number 20. Peter Mahovlich comes down the left wing and lets a good flat shot go low and to the right side. Holacek again caught well back in the crease. And I think Holacek is guessing a little bit on Team Canada's shots. I don't think he's quite sure at how fast they're coming, and he's been beaten cleanly twice. This, uh, kind of, this game uh, almost gives you the impression of what we thought might happen against the Soviets before they had their eight-game series. It's entirely different. It's up to center ice. Florida couldn't get very far. Canadian team seemed to be able to recover that puck almost with ease, and it's broken up at the Canadian blue line. With the puck going to Parisi, losing it again. The puck is docked to the wing as Martin Neck had a chance. Phil Esposito going in with Parisi. He goes into the corner, tried to center. They fall with 
Stastny, Farda, and Martinek coming back at center. A long shot by Stastny was caught easily. Canada at their own blue line. Bill Esposito again lobbed it over the line, knocked it wide. It's recovered by Horoshovsky, who cleared out of center there to Martinek. Going in, Martinek missed the pass, and Canada recover again. Cashman to center ice. Skating rather lackadaisically, gets it to Phil Esposito, who drilled a hot one. And Holacek handled that hot one, 15-20. You notice there that Holacek came well out to cut down the angle. In fact, that's the first time on a Canadian shot that he has actually set up properly. He came out well to the top of the circular goal crease and cut down the angle on Phil Esposito's shot. On both the goals by Savard and Peter Mahavis, he's been standing well back in the crease and both the goals have beaten him cleanly. 15-20 played in the first period. Canada leading 2-0 and under no pressure whatsoever. The puck goes to center ice. Dennis Hull shot it right back. Clark is out there in the forward line with him. And Redmond on the far side. Klopach got as far as the Canadian blue line and that seems to be about the limit so far. Now Hollick. Harry Hollick was stopped. Another rush to center ice. Three of the move up with a pass on the right side to Kopach. It's Kopach going in and he was checked as he went to shoot. Canada attacks with Clark. Unable to get past center ice. A long shot from a long way out by Glennie. Bounced off the boards. And they've played 16-08 of the first period. Canada leading 2-0. Another long shot. Here they're right in front of the goal. Here's another chance. Canada in possession. Clark back to the blue line. Sealing took his shot, and it hit Redmond's skate and bounded to the corner. The Czech Czechoslovakians try to get out on that left wing. They're coming up to the blue line, weaving a bit at center. Kaplatch and the two Hollicks, but they couldn't get past center ice. Kaplatch trying it again. Number nine. He stopped at the blue line. The puck goes loose. Carried into the corner against the boards with Yaroslav Halleck covering them. Coming up in our first intermission, a feature called The Faces of Prague. John Esau takes a look at the people in Prague during the World Championships here last April. And Pat Marston and Howie Meeker will analyze some of the highlights of this period. 1647 played in the first period. 2 nothing for Canada and quite a difference in this game over the previous series with the Soviets, when every game was fought to the last ounce. Stan Makita from the corner tried to clear it. Talon cleared it over on the far side. They're moving up now, Park to center ice, over the line, Frank Mahovlich on the left, didn't call, go through, and it's offside. This has probably been so far the most freewheeling period that Team Canada has had a chance to play in nine games. The Czechs still do not seem to be able to settle down and get their passes on, and their skating looks a little labored. So far, there has been absolutely no sting to the Czechoslovakian attack in, in any way or any shape or form. Puck goes back into the uh, Czechoslovakian zone, a cleared pass, went right in front of their own defense. Here's Mahavlich going right in, pass in front of the net. The puck bounced off a skate. Makita got a stick on it, Park again. Park five on that far side, jammed on the boards. Makita goes in there, and he's covered on the play with Palachek beside him. But the puck just won't come out of that check. Finally it did. And Cornwallier goes back to get it, and the Czechoslovakians start changing again. Frank Mahovlich to Cornwallier, racing into the open corner. His pass hit a skate. They shoot it out at center ice. Callan played it over to Park. Park bumped his man out of the play. And so far, the Czechoslovakians have been completely outplayed. Canada leading 2-0. But it's the way they're doing it with a limited amount of effort. Dryden out of the net, cleared it into the corner. They jam on the boards. 
It's over on the far side, back to the blue line. The shot is wide as Stastny was parked right off, right off the corner there and couldn't get a shot on goal. Puck slides all the way back to the Czechoslovakian blue line, only to have Horoshovsky go in front of his own net, made a bad pass. They're coming down on the far side. Martinek got it front. Here's a shot and a good save there after Farda, number 11, let it go on a pass from Martinek. And Dryden had to be sharp on that. Goldsworthy is on the uh, wing now. Peter Mahovlich with him. Teams are at full strength. And it's 2 nothing for Canada. 19-10 left uh, uh, played in the first period. Less than a minute remaining in this period. It's from the corner, a pass intercepted by Goldsworthy. Skates to center ice with Peter Mahovlich. Mahovlich going into the corner, passed it back. Dion, 34 for Canada, trying to get that puck in front, played it back, and Peter Mahovlich fired a shot without any steam behind it, and it went wide. Now another try, here's a shot deflected to the far wing, and Holacek is moving on every time they take a shot on goal. 1949, played in the first period, 2-0 for Canada. The puck is at center, Peter Mahovlich, Failed to get past center ice. Kapat skates up on the right side, and the siren goes to end the first period in which the Canadian team had a big edge in play, even though they are only able to score two goals. But it was very lackadaisical effort. Savard got the first goal at 8.19 on a long shot from the blue line, and Peter Mahovlich drilled one at 13.55 to make it 2 nothing. With the score, Canada 2 and Czechoslovakia no score. This is game nine with Team Canada from Prague. As a matter of fact, and up high, and then another group of Canadians are off to our right. There must be around 100, uh, and as I gather from the sweaters, a lot of them must come from Montreal. But the score is 2-0 as the Czechoslovakians come out for the start of the second period. This game has been entirely different from the first eight that we had uh, with the Soviets. A different style of hockey, and uh, there isn't a tension. We're looking at number 21, Ivan Halinka. He's 22 years old, and he had an outstanding game at the Olympics in Sapporo. And I might comment at this time that the oldest player on this Czech national team is 31 years old. That's Klapat, number nine. He's a right winger. The youngest player is number 21, Ivan Halinka, and he's 22 years old. It gives him an average age overall of 26 years old, and it's a, a reasonably old team, Foster. Yes, they seem that way. Uh, they don't seem to have the speed that uh, you'd expect, and, of course, their team play has been uh, fairly similar to that of Canada, where they play more or less individual efforts. Although the Canadian team is playing more as a team almost every time they go out. Of course, there's uh, quite a change in the Canadian squad tonight. They have uh, practically all the players that hadn't been playing uh, regularly out there. And they drop a number of the uh, players that had played regularly. So that they're all getting a chance to participate. I noticed that Holacek uh, had uh, the reserve goalkeeper, Zarilla, uh, talking to him. Uh, just before the uh, period was ready to start. And here you uh, see them uh, trying to uh, spruce up Holacek, who's uh, had a rather uh, rusty performance so far. I think Holacek, as a goaltender, of course, he has never seen Team Canada before. He's heard probably a lot about some of the big shots, and he looks just a, a little bit shaky, and he's standing well back in his goal crease, which is uh, making it much more difficult for himself if he comes out and cuts down the angle a little better. A lot of those shots that he's having to make good saves on will hit him directly in the pad. Canada will be to our left for this second period. 
and Czechoslovakia to the right. And they're starting off with the two Hollicks and Klopach as a forward line. Cashman is on the right wing. Phil, Phil Esposito at center. As they start back at center ice, a long shot is very weak. It goes wide of the net, and it's cleared off to the corner. Makach and Pospisil are the defensemen for the Czechoslovakians. The puck is back in the Czechoslovakian zone. Martinek is now going out there into the corner as they've started to change their lines to see if they can get a different combination. Now it's Hollick down the left side to the blue line. He couldn't get through. Phil Esposito at center just lobbed one. Holacek had no trouble. It's taken on the wing there by Hospicil. And it's up to center ice. A long shot there by McCotch. And the puck went into the corner. They still have it in the Canadian zone. The puck is loose. Here's a shot. And Dryden had to move very fast on that drive from the right side as the Czechoslovakians play their defense up on that particular play. And that was a good shot by McCott. That's by far the most dangerous scoring opportunity the Czechoslovakians have had. And Dryden was called upon to make a, a very quick pad save off a whistling shot from just inside the point. I might comment on that first line. They put Ivan Halinke in there, number 21, with the two Hollick brothers instead of Klopach. Nedomansky is now at center ice, clearing it back to the blue line. A long shot there by Bednar, the defense player, and the puck rolls back to center ice. They're making frequent changes and beginning to juggle their line. It's over on the right side. Peter Mahovlich carrying in with Goldsworthy. The puck, puck goes loose. It's taken by Cusella. Cusella skates up to the blue line. Number 18 clearing over on the right wing. And Omaske was squeezed right out, but they keep the puck in there. Finally, it's brought out over the line. Peter Mahovlich cleared it right down the ice. Holacek had to stop it. Goldsworthy goes into the corner, tried to center it. It's blocked by Cocta. Cocta going in back of his own net. Cleared over on the left side to Bednar. He shot it out at center ice. And Canada cleared right into the corner. As it goes over the line, it's called for icing. And both teams are going to change again. And they've played only two minutes and seven seconds of the second period. Two nothing for Canada. It's very early in this period, but the Czechoslovakians look like they are skating a little more freely now. They're not quite as tense as they were in that first period. And I expect that they'll now start to cause Team Canada a bit more trouble. Sparta is at center ice. Stasny is on the wing with Martinek. They're lining up for the face-off. The crowd trying to stir them up to some real action. Puck was broken up, and Martinek goes in there with Farda. Farda back of the net was squeezed out of the play. And from the corner, Canada trying to clear that puck out. Finally, they bring it out. Clark to the blue line. Up with Redmond on the left side. Here's back of the shot. It went wide. As Dennis Hall let that shot go from a long way out. Now they're bringing it in again. Redmond was offside. 24 for Canada. And it's called practically at center ice. Played 240, second period, 2-0 for Canada. Redmond, 24, was the offside player. Puck is back to the defense. Horoshovsky cleared it across on the far wing to Bubla. He was stopped at center ice. The puck goes right on into the corner. A pass right in front. That was stopped there, a great style. And a good try there, the one of the best for the Czechoslovakians on that play. And it was Stasty that had the chance as he was right in on top of goal. A great scoring opportunity here by the Czechoslovakians. They walk right in, and Brighton's called upon to make the biggest save of the game so far.
They're just changing again. The uh, Czechoslovakians changing at every opportunity. Hollick is now at center ice. The two Hollicks are out there with Palinka. And apparently that's the line that's out there for the second time in the game, having uh, uh, dropped Klapach, temporarily at least. Whether he's injured or not, we don't know. There's a shot wide of the goal. Redmond from the corner, standing there, trying to draw his check out. Pass in front, and it went wide with Park trying to dig it out from the corner. Park is covered, but got the puck near the defense. It rolls to the blue line. Dennis Hall shot it back of the net. Still there. Check trying to get out. A quick pass to Papasil. Give it on the left side to Halenka. A trip there. Dennis Hall upset. The Czechoslovakian on the play. And there'll be a penalty. This is game nine with Team Canada from Prague. Penalty to Canada. Czechoslovakia on the attack. Carey in there on the wing. A rolling puck was off to the side as Dryden went down. Here's another shot. Canada's a man short. And they better perk up here. They've been taking things a little too easily. It shot around in the corner there. Bednar knocked it to the corner. Peter Mahovlich cleared right to his own uh, goal there. And Dryden was down low to cover. Dryden there now on Peter Mahovlich. Again with the big ice surface, the, so or the Czech Slovakians will try to establish good puck control in this offensive end. From the faceoff, Nedomanski at center ice, 14, cleared it back to the goal. It hit the side of the net, comes back to the blue line. Here's the shot, and the drive was wide. As Bednar let that one go, and it's covered back to the net by Kokta. Who had the Canadian player bottled up against the boards, and uh, they were showing a little more spirited action. There's no doubt about that. Well, I think that Coach Pittner of the Czechoslovakians, because he knows his players aren't in top condition yet, he's changing the lines much more frequently, and of course, it's working to some advantage at this point right now because the Czechoslovakians have definitely perked up. Martinek, Varda, and Stasty are now out there for Czechoslovakia. Canada clear it down the ice. There's still a man short. The puck goes over to the boards. They're covering up. Canada recovers. Phil Esposito out there with Parisi. Phil Esposito dragged along the boards, forced back. Martinek tried to follow through. Savard is carrying to the corner. Cutting back into the corner, now on the right side, squeezed a bit on the play by Farda, who's very persistent. 5.22 left in the second period, 2-0 for Canada. A great display of puck control between Phil Esposito and Serge Savard. And Serge Savard looks an awful lot like he did a few years ago when he won the Conn Smythe Trophy in the Stanley Cup. He looks like his health has returned and, of course, the play along with it. From the face-off, the puck is lobbed right down the ice. Holacek came well out of the gold piece to block it. Orishovsky failed on his first try. Now he's moving up to the blue line. He's number three at center ice. A long shot. Dryden had no trouble on that. A direct drive at his pads. Canada clear out at center ice. Dennis Hall getting ready. There's a shot on goal by... Phil Esposito handled easily on the short side. They're in the corner, and the play is stopped, and Dennis Hall has about three seconds remaining of his penalty. They've played 5.56 of the second period, 2-0 for Canada. If some of the Czechoslovakian names come on the screen, we might comment that they are with the surname first, Stan Makita is getting ready for the face-off with Cornwaye on the right wing. Yaroslav Hollick is centering for Czechoslovakia. Here's Cornwaye getting that puck to the blue line. Dennis Hull is on. It's recovered by the Czechoslovakians and carried down there by McCosh. 
and cleared into the corner, back of the net. Canada return with Dennis Hall at the blue line at center, shooting it into the corner. Recovered there by Hollick, Erie Hollick. Hollick passes on the wing, up to the blue line, and he failed to get anywhere. Cornwallis comes right back with Stan Makita, who couldn't get up for the pass. A clear pass to Erie Hollick. They go over the line. Yanislav Hollick uh, followed, but couldn't uh, do much about it. Sealing is forced into the corner for Canada. He's squeezed against the boards, and it was Yaroslav Hollick that had him covered. 2-0 for Canada. They played 649. And there is uh, Yaroslav Hollick, number five. His brother is number 20, Erie Hollick. The face-off is going to be in the Canadian zone to the right. The puck goes into the corner, and it wasn't dropped fairly, so they'll do it again. Dryden uh, was all set there and then just eased up. Canada leading 2-0. Oh, both goals in the first period. Savard from Park and Esposito. Peter Mahovlich from Talon. 8-19 and 13-55, the times of the two goals. At center right, a cleared pass too far, and it went offside as Cornwallis went roaring in on the right wing. Stan Makita, of course, was born in Czechoslovakia, and I'm sure he'd love to have a great game here tonight. He's well known here. They follow him in the National Hockey League, and I think he'd like to put on a show in Czechoslovakia. Palacek is number 16. Nedomansky is at center, and Kokta is on the left wing for Czechoslovakia right now on the player change, which they're making frequent changes all the time. Canada coming back, Cornwallis to Frank Mahovlich. Cleared into the corner. Mahovlich couldn't get that puck. Bednar, the defenseman, covered up. Nedomansky couldn't get out. Park is keeping it in there, right at the blue line. The puck is finally a three-man break. Nedomansky going in on the left. He's set right in front of shot. Oh, and Kokta, who was on the right wing, got the pass perfectly and then fired wide of the net. That was their best scoring chance. And they're coming closer. A quick pass to Cornwallis, and the puck goes over on the board. He's jammed there. They go in back of the net. Cut in front instead. A clear pass to Nedomansky. A long shot. No trouble with that for Dryden. The puck is back and slides right down the ice on a player change, but they don't call it for icing. Puck is still in the Czechoslovakian zone. Park goes in front of the net. Fired one about two feet wide. Ori jammed it around. Back of the goal. Bednar tried to get out. Was stopped. Bednar, 19, goes in back of his own goal. Goals where they went after him went right by. Then he passed behind the net when Dion went after him. Dion near the goal as Holacek grabbed that one so there's no further play. Good for checking by Bill Goldsworthy there, and the Czechoslovakians were running around a little bit, and Holacek stopped the puck for a whistle, which was probably the best thing he could do there because it looked like his teammates were going to get him into some trouble. They have played eight minutes and 44 seconds of the second period, Canada leading 2-0. But Czechoslovakia having better chances, and they're working harder. Now then, they start off with Staste down the left wing, number 12, Going in with Farda, and the shot went wide of the net. It bounded over in that far corner. Slides to the blue line. A long shot. Here's a right front net. They score! Czechoslovakia finally scores. And the goal getter was Stasny, who fired it from about 25 feet out. The first shot is blocked. Stasny walks right into the slot. A good shot right along the ice and beats Dryden cleanly. And this is where Dryden has his main trouble. He's right along the ice, and a good shot by Stassi, who was right there, the opportunist, and Czechoslovakia is right back into this game. The Canadian team will have to perk up. They've been taking things rather lightly in, in the play so far. And now they will 
indicates from the actions of this Czechoslovakian team who are getting stronger all the time. They're going to make it tough. Canada now leading two to one. They're giving repairs there to Dryden over by the Canadian bench. He's sitting there, as you see, on the, on the board, and they're fixing his right pass. Dryden didn't have much of a chance on that goal, Foster. Sassney picked the puck up right between the two hash marks. He was sitting dead center. He let a good shot, though, uh, go right along the ice, and these are the shots that hurt Dryden the most. This is game nine. Uh, finished the work on his pad, and now he's skating back to the goal. To our left, that's the Canadian end. Czechoslovakia to the right. And that goal has certainly perked up the Czechoslovakian fans. There's no question about that. The two Hollicks are out there now, along with Halenka, who's been added to this line. The puck goes over the line at center. It's cleared right onto Redmond's stick. He shoots it out at center. Two to one for Canada. At 9.20 of the second period, here's a roller in front of the goal, and the pass went wide. There's going to be a penalty call on that last play, and will be charging by Redmond, who will get the penalty. Redmond off. This is game nine with Team Canada from Prague. They block it back of the net into that corner. Still in the corner, they jam there. The Vard. Because Team Canada had it so easy in the early part of this game, they might have some trouble now readjusting. There's no question that the Czechoslovakians have gotten their legs as a result of a shaky first period. And Team Canada now is a little bit on the run here, so they have to get through this penalty or they could be in trouble. Canada land short. The puck comes right back to center ice. Bednar on the defense with Guzella. Cleared it over on that far wing. Medovansky starts down on the far side, was blocked at center ice. Clark turns for Canada, drives it right back at his own goalkeeper, and Sealing goes back to the net, shooting it off the board, but not out. Clark goes over to cover, clearing it to center ice. But the puck taken by Palachek and handed to his teammate who goes back to the goal. It's over onto the left wing. A cleared pass by Nedomatsky. Carried in by Kokta. Kokta going in on the left side. Skated off as he went back to the net. He gets it again, centered it, and it bounces off to the side. Here's a pass to Nedomatsky. Back to the blue line. Then into Nedomatsky again, number 14. Still has it, took his shot, went off the skate, another drive was wide as Palachek let it go. And the Czechoslovakians have Canada on the run at this stage where they're a man short. Cashman tried to splash that puck away. Roughs up uh, the player Bednar, and that nearly started something, as Cashman is always uh, energetic in any way. Backclap Nedomansky has probably as good a shot as anybody in the game of hockey, especially a wrist shot, and he lets the shot go at this net that Ken Dryden has a lot of trouble with. Redmond is still in the penalty box. 11-01 played in the second period. Canada leading 2-1. to one. Canada 2, Czechoslovakia 1. But the Czechoslovak is really perking up. And Phil Esposito steps out onto the ice for the center ice duty. He gets that puck in back of the net over on that far wing, and they slide it off the boards right down the ice because Redmond is still in the penalty box. Horoshovsky moving up now to the blue line, number three at center. He clears into the corner. Parisi just dribbled to the side here. 
Redmond is back on the ice. The team is at full strength. Redmond rushes over to partially check his man. A long drive goes off the leg into the corner and over the board. This Barta couldn't control it. But notice something very different that the Czechoslovakians do that the Soviets definitely don't do. The Czechoslovakians dump the puck in a lot. They don't hesitate to throw it into the corner or even throw it right at the goaltender, but they chase it. And this is the big difference. And they like to get the pursuit, the Canadians running to the corners, and then they'll go right back to the point with it and hope that their defenseman will get a good shot. They're lining up ready for the faceoff. The teams are at full strength. Into the corner, a pass goes astray. They're trying to knock that puck out. The Canadian team rather sloppy in bringing it out. Cleared pass goes down the far wing. Reese was away offside on the pass. And it'll be brought back as Czechoslovakia elect to make another change. And they're making very frequent changes. 11.53 remaining or played in the... Uh, 11.53 played in this second period. Canada leading 2-1. They had a 2-0 lead in the first period. The face-off, the Hollicks are out there with Halinka. Puck goes back to Halinka, playing it to Pottsville, and it goes to center ice. It rolls over with Bill Esposito rushing after it. It goes back to the net, trying to pass in front to Cashman, who's chased into the corner for Canada. The puck is close to Phil Esposito, is shot went off a leg. They roll it out to center ice. Park going back to get it for Canada. Talon is on the defense with him. The puck is left loose there. Hollick couldn't do anything about it. It rolls back to Pospisil. At center ice, Hollick shoots it over on the wing. Halinka went after it, was beaten to the puck. And there's a question who was going to bump into who on that particular play. Halenka will stop, but Hollick gets it back to the blue line. A long shot, way wide of the target. And they played 12.58 of the second period, 2-1 for Canada. Halenka couldn't get that pass, but it's recovered in the corners. Canada trying to shoot the puck out. They can't get it out. Finally, they carry it out to the blue line at center ice. Callum getting it over on the right wing. Esposito closing in, passed in front of the net. Park rushes over, number five. Here's his shot, dribbled off the skate with Callum in front of the net. And he took a whack at Hollick's pads as he went by. Down the left side, a shot on drive to hit a leg. There's going to be a penalty there. Callum. Got a piece of Yaroslav Halleck and will get a penalty as a result. This is Game 9 with Team Canada from Prague. Children to college or to send yourself on a real vacation trip. Whatever you want to do, whenever you want to do it. And you can pay the loan back over a period of years rather than a period of months like most personal loans. At Avco, it's our business to lend money to homeowners. What you do with the money is your business. When you believe in people, work it around. When you believe in people, work it We're back in the studios in Canada here in Toronto as they were unable to provide us with our cameras for intermissions over in Prague. So Pat Marsden will be along, Howie Meeker will be here, and Johnny Bauer will be along to analyze the goaltending that has been a highlight of uh, all the games over the making sure that uh, no one had any elbow room at all in front of Dryden. Phil Esposito goes over and then goes to the uh, Canadian bench. And he's getting relief. So Peter Mahovlich is now at center. Savard is on the defense as the puck is knocked to the corner. But the Canadian team trying to exert themselves even more now under a certain amount of pressure. A long shot goes right down the ice. Holacek came out to stop it. It's recovered by Bednar, the defense player. Bednar lets his teammate, Nedomansky, who's the key man on the attack. He clears over on the right side to Kotka. 
Kopta was taken out on the play. It's still in there, though. He goes after it, gets it again, and shot it wide of the corner of the goal. Made a good move. Canada failed to get out on a quick passing play as Palachek broke it up, has the puck, goes back of the net, cleared back to the blue line. Bednar got it over on that far wing. Here's a shot. Another save, and Savard cleared it out with a long drive that went down the ice. Frank Mahovlich was unable to get it. Back they come again. Up to center ice on the left wing. Kuzella goes into the corner, passes back to Stasny. Back again to the blue line. Over on the side, a shot. And it was deflected wide. They keep it in there. Stasny, they score! A deflection in front of the net. And Czechoslovakia have tied it up. The crowd are going wild on that deflection into the net. This is what happened when you give a team good puck control. They almost scored on that first shot. And then the man was standing all alone. And he kicked the puck down and into the net under Dryden. Czechoslovakia is right back in this game. In fact, they've got the momentum now, Foster, and Team Canada might have trouble stopping them. They're ready for the faceoff. We'll wait for the official on that. It was tipped into the net, and it's a tie score at 15-24 on the second period. A pass over on the wing. Dusty took a long shot. And it was called on the offside and is brought back close to the Czechoslovakian blue line on the far wing. But the Canadian team will have to do better than they have. They started off too easily. And Harry Sindon is uh, a bit perturbed as he watches the effort given so far. Horoshovsky goes in front of the goal, coming up to the blue line. Cleared over onto the right side. It goes over the line. Stasny had his shot, and it was offside anyway. They have 15. They've played 15:46 of the second period. Canada two, Czechoslovakia two. Canadian professional football can be seen on CTV tomorrow, October the first, as Hamilton meets Ottawa in the East, while Saskatchewan takes on Calgary in the West. Check your local listings for the time. Also tomorrow on CTV in the East, the Breeders' Stakes will be shown from Woodbine. Also consult your local listings. A two-all tie now, and Stan Makita goes to center ice on a clearing pass that uh, is called in at the Czechoslovakian zone. Stasny moving around there, number 12, gets that puck, 12, going back on the goal. Stasny cleared it over on the far side. Martin Eck got as far as center. Canada recover. The teams are at full strength. Here's a mix-up with Gord Waye getting his stick high, mixing it up with Stasny. But the play goes right on. The puck is in the corner. Horoshovsky cleared on the right wing. They're moving up to the blue line to center ice. A roller carried on to the defense. He was stopped. Back to center ice for Frank Mahovlich. Trying to team up with Stan Makita, and it's offside. Stasny, who gets his second goal of the evening on that deflection. The goal was scored at 15-24. It appeared that way, and we just wanted it confirmed as whether he touched it or not, but it certainly looked like it, and he was given credit. So Stasny has been the big shooter for Czechoslovakia, having scored both goals. The first one at 9.02 and the second at 15.24 with Talon off. The Czechs come right back with a long pass there as Hollick tried to clear the puck in front of the net. It goes back to the goal. The two Hollicks and Helenka are on this line. A jamming session over there. There's going to be another penalty called and it looks uh, as if the Czechoslovakians will uh, get a penalty. Stan Makita also, so the, uh, a double penalty. Makita, the two of them fell together. 
and they roughed each other up on the play. It's Hollick, that's Yuroslav Hollick, and Makita. Coming up in the second period intermission, Johnny Esau and Johnny Bauer will discuss goalkeeping in this game, and Pat Marsden and Howie Meeker with analysis of the second period. Hollick and Van Makita are in the penalty box, so they're five aside. But after a, a rather careless and a slow start in this first period in which Canada worked into a 2 nothing lead, the Czechoslovakians have carried the play in the second and have tied it up. There's a shot and drive, another shot. He kicked that one out. And Talon goes in back of the goal. And they're really testing him now. Well, they didn't seem to get anywhere in the first period. Dion is turning at center ice for Canada over to Goldsworthy, too far. Buck is taken to safety, back of the goal. A cleared pass as Pospisil comes down, goes over on that far side. A pass to Pospisil. He goes into the corner, cleared on the play, covered by Park. Their elbows go a bit high, and they're shutting each other around fairly well. Foster, I think it's the same old story here in Czechoslovakia that penalties are definitely going to hurt Team Canada. The Czechoslovakians control the puck in a little different way than the Soviets do, but it's just as effective. They dump the puck in a lot more, but they chase it and they establish control just as, as positively, and they can, they can definitely score on their power play. And if Team Canada persists to rough it up, and possibly get these penalties. I think they're going to be inviting a lot more trouble than they can handle tonight. Palachek is taking the face off, and he lost the puck down the right side. They're five aside at the time, and that was Goldsworthy that was knocked down. Up at center ice, a pass on the left wing failed to click. Palachek goes back after his man. Carried Dion into the corner. The two of them shove each other around. Bednar is there too, number 19, the defense player. The play was stopped. Goldsworthy stood by there on that particular play. Makita got it for cross-checking and uh, Pollock for elbowing. That was at 1657. It's 1806 now. It's a two-all tie, and quite a different story from the first period that was very much in favor of Canada without too much effort. Phil Esposito out there on the forward line with Parisi. A long pass by Farda to center ice. A long shot wide of the net. Dryden cleared it to the corner. as Bubla had a, a chance there on the last try. Down the right wing, Parisi fired one to the far side. Horoshovsky cleared back of the net. Two of them went down on that play. A return rush going in. Martinek was stopped on the play, goes into the corner. Horoshovsky goes after it, covers his man. They start uh, wrestling a bit over there on the far side, but nothing very serious, as you notice. The Czechoslovakians have definitely started to skate, and one thing that they do as well as the Soviets, or in fact any team in hockey, is they use the big ice surface over here. We've noticed lately that they've been getting those rink-wide passes. The forwards are coming up their wing with a full head of steam, and it's very difficult to defense against. The face-off will be in the Canadian zone to the left of Dryden. 1849 played of the second period, a two-all tie. The puck goes back of the Canadian goal. Phil Esposito on the move, weaving a bit at the blue line, passed on the right side. It's covered against the boards as Savard was up there trying to team up with him. Ori is on the other side of the defense. Dan Makita's being replaced. Dennis Hull is coming out. Now they're all changing. 56 seconds left in the second period. A two-all tie. 
And this second period has been very much in favor of the Czechoslovakians who have shown a complete reversal of form after apparently lulling the Canadian team into a sense of security in the first. From the center ice area, Clark fights for that puck, couldn't get through. Hollick rushed over to cover, cleared on the left side. Pospisil cleared ahead, was blocked at center ice, the puck going back to the defense player, McCotch. McCotch is chased into the corner. He's number four. Going back to Pospisil. Pospisil goes to the blue line at center ice. And he it was offside on the play. Hollick was over the line, and the fans are objecting to that call. I couldn't say this after that first period, Foster, but I, I've always felt the Czechoslovakians are the best team in Europe, and I think they're starting to come alive here, and Canada might have their hands full in this third period coming up. From the face-off, the puck goes back to Sutter Ice. It's just cleared from... It's going to be called for icing. They've played 1951 of the second period, a two-all tie after Canada had worked into a 2-0 lead in the first period. Face-off will be to the left of the Czechoslovakian goal. The Czechoslovakians are a lot more flexible than the Soviets, and this is why I think that they, in a long series against Canada, that they could cause us more trouble because being more flexible, they adjust to any style a lot faster than the Soviets, and I think in the last three games in Moscow, the Team Canada definitely disrupted the Soviet system. And, of course, they came on to win those three big games. But the Czechoslovakians, they'll bend any way you want, and they'll play in any style you want. And I base my feelings that they are the best team. Ready for the face-off. It's a long shot wide of the net. Dennis Hull goes back to get it. And the siren goes to end the second period. And the Czechoslovakians are very happy as they... Clark uh, apparently is going to get a, a penalty at the end of the period there for hitting the uh, Czechoslovakian player. There's an argument going on here just as they were skating off. And the old whistling starts... Uh, going. Canada took a 2-0 lead in the first period. Savard from Park and Esposito at 8-19. Then Peter Mahovlich from Talon at 13-55. And it was 2-0 for Canada. End of the first period. Stasty got two goals in the second period. 9-02 and at 15-24. Phil Esposito showing his anger as the Canadian team come over to the penalty box as the penalty was going to be assessed there right at the end of the period. With the score, Canada 2 and Czechoslovakia 2. The second period when Clark uh, seemed to upset the apple cart by uh, knocking uh, a helmet off one of the Czechoslovakian players. And uh, there's a little shoving and then a great argument that went on for almost five or six minutes. Uh, at the penalty box. We still haven't been able to find out what the final outcome was, but it seemed obvious that the Canadian team thought they were getting the worst of it because they had about eight players there for the full five or six minutes to discuss the issue, but we didn't get the result. But I do believe that Clark will at least get a penalty, and whether anybody else does, I don't know. Brian? Well, Foster, as you said earlier, the Czechoslovakians have come back in that second period, it looked like they totally dominated. The shots indicated that. They, they outshot Team Canada 12 to 3. And they got their two goals from Stastny, number 12. He got his first goal at 9.02 on an assist from Bubla. And he got his second goal at 15.24 uh, unassisted. And again, that was a deflected shot down. There were several penalties in that period, and it appeared to hurt Team Canada. They picked up. Three out of the five penalties, with Dennis Hall getting the first one at 3.58, a tripping penalty. 
Then that was followed by Mickey Redmond at 9.26 with a charging penalty. Then we got our third in a row at 13.43. Dale Talon for high sticking. And then at 16.57, Sam Makita and Yuri Hollick went off together. Makita for cross-checking and Hollick for elbowing. Well, the teams are just skating around there now and uh, more or less not paying too much attention to anything, but the Czechoslovakian fans are really in an uproar and they've been hooping it up. Quite a difference from the first period. The referees have yet to return to the ice and I, I don't know what the delay is. Possibly they are trying to decide amongst themselves what penalties they are going to give. But I might take a moment here to, to comment on the refereeing in this game. This is the first time, of course, that we have seen over in international hockey or in Europe. And it's the first time I've ever seen it where there has been one referee and two linesmen on the ice. And I have to believe that this is the only way that you can referee international hockey properly. And I hope as a result of this game that the International Federation of Referees realizes that the best way is to have three men on the ice. They, they normally have, that being two referees, and they both have to try and do the offsides as well as being referees. Now the officials have come out on the ice. Rodsack are the two linesmen. And as far as uh, we can judge here, they've been very adequate, although they seem to be uh, causing the Canadian team no end of trouble on penalties, but I would judge on the play, every one of them has been merited. Clark has given five minutes as far as we know. Apparently he drew blood when uh, he checked the, uh, the opposition player, but uh, it was kind of a skirmish, so it'll be a double penalty as a result. Pospisil is the uh, player that uh, he clashed with, and uh, likely he'll only get two minutes, and Clark will get five. So they're five aside as they start in this third and last period, a two-all tie. Talon had a pass to Phil Esposito, and he was skated off very quickly. Horoshovsky couldn't get anywhere. Now another rush to center ice over the line. A long shot. And that was a good shot by Halinka, who gets right back to break up a Canadian rush. Puck is on the far side. Hollick, Erie Hollick, couldn't uh, clear. It comes right out to center ice, where Dale Talon is turning at center, going over the line, tried to barge his way through the defense, goes into the corner, gets it back to Park at the blue line. Park fired one right in front of the net as Talon was there with Holacek making a good save on Talon who seemed to be right in front of him. Czechoslovakians attempt to attack, broken up at center ice. There's still five aside, a two-all tie, and they've played a minute and 12 seconds of the third period. Parisi fell when he tried to pass to his teammate Cockton cleared it over on the far side. Hollick is stopped at center ice by Phil Esposito. They're changing on the goal card. Waye goes rushing up, nearly broke through the defense, goes to the board, played it behind and out to center ice, where Park is forced back for Canada by Cockton. It's cleared over on this side to Talon, back to Park at the blue line. At center, three of them up. Phil Esposito failed to follow. Here's another try. Over to Talon, a shot. Bounded off the leg. On that play. And it's called at the Czechoslovakian corner there to the left. Well, after a shaky start in that first period, the Czechoslovakians are definitely playing with a lot more poise and confidence now that they, they know what the... Uh, Team Canada can do at the beginning of this game of course Team Canada was totally an unknown quantity to them But now they've settled right down and they're playing good solid hockey the Czechoslovakians are now at full strength Canada a man short as Clark got a major penalty On that play 
out at the end of the second period, which was a skirmish right after the bell, after the siren had gone. Here's a rolling puck near the Canadian goal. It was blocked off there, though, as Palachek goes to the corner, getting it back to the blue line. Palachek from the other side, trying to center it. Blocked it. It comes from the side. It's just a score! They've taken the lead. And it's Kocha that got the loose puck to give Czechoslovakia the lead. Kokta, a good move by Kokta. He steps right out from the corner. Now he's got Dryden at his mercy here because if he keeps coming, Dryden has to cover the whole net. Dryden opens up the legs and he jams the puck right between. A good move by Czechoslovakia as they fight hard for the puck in the corner. They come up with the puck and Kokta, who gets possession, comes right out and jams it between Dryden's legs. The Czechoslovakians have taken the lead. Czechoslovakia three, Canada two, Kokta at 2.28, scoring with Clark in the penalty box. And it was a well-earned goal, fighting his way in front of the net. Czechoslovakia on the move again. So they, Czechoslovakia has overhauled a 2 nothing lead and has scored three successive goals to take the lead. We've just been advised, advised by the officials at the Toronto airport that people must not go to the Toronto airport tomorrow evening because of security reasons at, at the airport and the players can all be seen at City Hall at around 6.30. From the face-off, here's a shot that went wide of the Canadian goal as the Czechoslovakians still press. It's on the right side, a cleared pass by Farda. Another shot, and Dryden had to be good on that as the Czechoslovakians seem to be getting better every time out. Dasty had that drive. The Czechoslovakians definitely have the momentum here, and they're putting a lot of pressure on Canada and Dryden's called upon to come up with another big save right after they've just scored. Bill Esposito will try the face-off. Cleared back behind the goal. Batted over, on the, over to Phil Esposito at center. He couldn't control the puck. It's still at center as Cashman is forced back in his own zone. Cleared over on the far wing to Savard. Savard shot it down the ice. Halicek just played it carefully and got it back of the goal. Puck is back of the, the net. Farda went after it. It's intercepted by Esposito, who rags it right back to center ice. Turning at center was checked. Cleared by Ori over on the far side. Back to Ori again on the left. Center ice and down the ice. They're going into the corner with Horoshovsky clearing it to the far wing, getting it. Halika got that pass over in the corner, went across the goal mouth. They come back to the net, centered out. Esposito recovers, takes it on the board, is hooked on the play. It goes into the corner, and there's going to be a hooking penalty to Czechoslovakia on that play. This is game nine with Team Canada from Prague. Czechoslovakia received a hooking penalty at 4.42 for hooking Phil Esposito. And the face-off is going to be to the left in Czechoslovakian territory, right on the rim of the circle. Dion at center now for Canada. It's still five aside. The puck goes up over the line, on into the corner. Nedomanski was bumped on the play. They recover in the corner. Coming from the side, Kokta tried to pass to Nedomanski, who's jammed in the corner, and the play is stuck. And they're roughing it up again. Team Canada just might have let the Czechoslovakians off the hook in this game. They're still close to 15 minutes to play, but the Czechoslovakians are getting stronger with each stride in this game, and Team Canada are still trying to get themselves geared up to get back into this game. And, of course, they're only down one goal, but they're going to have to dig fairly deeply to beat this team the way the Czechoslovakians are growing in strength. I think the big feature of the Czechoslovakian display has been that they've gained confidence. 
They seem to be very shaky playing the all-star Canadian team in the first period and just couldn't get anywhere. But they certainly changed their tactics. Here's a quick pass. Dennis Hall going to Dennis way. He went right in there on a pass and nearly had a, a great chance there, but he hurried it as Cornwaille took the forward pass and gets another chance down at the blue line, clearing it into the corner. Esposito standing in front, back to Cornwaille. A drive over to Mahavlich. He centered it, and it's recovered and brought back to center ice. They're closing in, one back, back, and drive. Oh, and drive and save on that one by Kocka that let the shot go. He comes right back again. Passes out in front, and the shot by McCutch was wide. Bill Esposito returning at the blue line with Cornwallier on his left. They go over the line. Esposito lost it. Back come the Texas of action to break away. Right in on goal. Right in. Oh, and Dryden made the save. It rolls in front. And the shot was Went right in there to have a great scoring chance. Two great saves by Ken Dryden. Martin had could come off the bench. He snuck right in behind. Nedermansky gave him an absolutely perfect breakaway pass, and Dryden gets the big pad out onto the post and stops almost a sure goal, and then the Czechoslovakians come right back again and almost score again, and Dryden takes it away from them. The Czechoslovakians are really rolling. They have a man on the penalty box. They, uh, Canadians are trying to hoop it up here to get their team really rolling, but they're having a hard time. Canada at full strength. Czechoslovakia, man short, and Farda will take the face off uh, with Clark. Farda got the draw, is forced back into, a, into center ice, cleared it now to Sealing, who's on the defense with Glenny. Sealing is back of the goal, giving it to Clark. Clark skates up to the blue line, at center ice, he couldn't get any farther. Another long ceiling cleared a long forward pass there. It was a way offside. And they've played six minutes and 35 seconds of the third period. Three to two for Czechoslovakia. Again, I'd like to emphasize that officials at Toronto's airport are saying that people must not go to the airport tomorrow afternoon to meet Team Canada on its arrival. All the players can be seen at City Hall at the Civic Reception, and please do not go to the airport. More changes going on on the ice. The uh, penalty still uh, is uh, against the Czechoslovakians. Hollick is now at center. As Canada, Glenny, passed up to Dennis Hull out there with Clark going into the corner, goes back to the net. Redmond is on the right wing, and the Czechoslovakian shoot it down the ice just as he became at full strength. CTV has a giant sports weekend coming up on Thanksgiving, starting with CFL football. In the east on Sunday, October the 8th, Montreal will be in Toronto, while in the west, BC takes on Saskatchewan. They've played six minutes and 51 seconds of this third period. They'll have a break at the 10 minute mark where they change ends under international rules. Sealing goes back into the Canadian zone. He's being watched by Hollick. Gets up to the blue line. But the Canadian team aren't really skating like they generally do. Now a jamming session over by the Canadian bench. Four of them just shoving. There isn't much to it. But Pospisil was right in the middle there. And they were jammed over by the Canadian bench. And really nothing happened. A lot of shoving at close quarters. So that uh, Erie Hollick stands there. They're apparently going to make a change. Halenka goes to the bench along with the two Hollicks. So now it's uh, Nedomansky at center ice with Cox on one wing and Polacek on the other. Puck is shot down the ice into the Czechoslovakian zone. Three to two for Czechoslovakia. Coming up on Thanksgiving Monday, October the 9th, 
More CFL football can be seen on CTV when Calgary will play the Ottawa Rough Riders. Following that game, horse racing fans can tune in on the Export A Invitational from Woodbine. Face off in Canada's zone. Teams at full strength. Buck rolls back to the corner. Clark goes in there first. They're trying to cover it in the corner. Redmond comes in back of the goal, moves over onto the left wing, dropped the pass. It's cleared over on the far side by Glenny. A long roller is knocked down with a high stick, but it was offside anyway. Czechoslovakia three, Canada two. And Canada has not scored a goal since the first period when they took a 2 nothing lead. Czechoslovakia scored two in the second. There's Peter Mahovlich back on the ice. Cocked to put the uh, Czechoslovakian team one up at 228 of the third period. Now they're underway as the Cocta is forced in back to the corner. It goes back to the net. Cocta number eight starting on that left wing. Left the puck. It's shot to the blue line. To center ice. They're moving up now on a pass on that left wing. Palacek was offside as he went in on the left side. Call back, and an unusual situation here in which we have a referee and two linesmen, something uh, unusual for European hockey. The Canadian team has suffered the most with penalties, and deservedly so. The puck goes back now into the Czechoslovakian zone. It's shot up to center ice, knocked down. Peter Mahovlich had his stick on it, but the puck was knocked with his glove, and Ori argues the point, but that's why the play was called. Ori is claiming it hit him on the arm, but the referee ruled that he pushed it with his glove. Dion is now at center ice. Peter Mahovlich on one wing, Goldsworthy on the other. Savard tried to shoot it ahead, gets it again. Cleared it over the line. It's brought out easily. Over onto the right wing, closing in. The shot is wide as Martinek let that go. He's out there with Farda and Stastny. This Stastny has been quite a marksman, having scored two of the three goals. Peter Mahovlich cuts over onto that right wing at center ice. Goes in on the defense, right in on goal. Tried to draw. The goalkeeper, Holacek, out, then fell. He made a real try of it, though, and was really flying as he went in, but he went off balance. Back they come on this right wing. And Bubla, trying to carry that puck, delayed and went offside. That was a very similar move by Peter Mahavis that he made on Trechak in Toronto, but he couldn't quite get Holacek to come out of the net far enough to jam it in the short side, but a good effort by Peter Mahovlich. Bill Esposito out there now at center ice. Parisi on one wing, Cashman on the other. Cashman on the right wing. There's Bill Esposito, who hasn't been able to really untrack himself uh, in this game so far. Bill Esposito now passing on the right side to Cashman. Cashman fired a shot, but was checked as he let it go. 9.08. Left in the third period. Canada down, one goal. A long pass to center ice. A race for it. Hollick goes in on the left side. Going back of the goal. Center right in front. And his brother, Erie Hollick, failed to get the pass. A return drive by Talon to center ice. He got as far as the blue line. Lost it. Park tried to cover his man. Here's over on the right wing. They centered out. And it went behind the attacking player, Hollick. That's Erie Hollick. There are two Hollicks on this line. The puck is back at center. The punch passed over onto the far wing. Hollick races in after it, going back to the goal. Canada recover with Park passing right onto the stick, and the buzzer goes for the first 10. Starting in on the final 10 minutes of the third period. Czechoslovakia to the right, Canada to the left, Czechoslovakia leading 3-2, to 
The puck is at center ice, rolled over the line. Here's a chance, the backhand. Oh, that was close as Dryden kicked that one out. The puck is back in the blue line, a long shot. Stopped again as Bednar let it go, the defense player. Bednar getting it again at the blue line. Passes to the corner. It's Palachek stopped by Park, who covered his man, and Canada recover. Bill Esposito starting out with a long pass. It's thrown with a glove as Parisi carried it with his glove. The long shot, and Holacek dropped down to cover. Holacek is now doing something that he didn't do in that first period. He's now coming out a long way, cutting down the angle, and he's playing these shots up in his body. He's getting the, his glove well in front of him, and he's not being called upon so far to make the, the big splits or go for the uh, far post with his legs or with his stick. Some of those more difficult saves to make. Glenny and Sealing, the Canadian defense playing up. Stan Makita at center, Cornwallier and Frank Mahovlich. Here's Frank Mahovlich getting a shot. It went wide. Cornwallier tried to take it off the board. They jam into the corner. It's recovered and shot out down the ice. It's going all the way, so it'll be called for icing. Martinek, Varda, and Stasny, the forward line for the Czechoslovakians. And they have Bubla and Horoshovsky on the, on the defense. Three to two for Czechoslovakia. The puck is to one side. Horoshovsky was stopped. Karnwaye rolled it to the side, and Holacek went down to cover. He's grabbing at everything. A good feature of the Czech attack, which even the Soviets uh, don't appear to do now, is that they play all five players, play together all the time. The two defensemen and the forward line play together as a unit, and it's always the same defense with the same forward line. Of course, the Czechoslovakians were, in fact, the first team in European hockey to get their defensemen rushing well up the ice, and, of course, because they knew their forwards so well. Here's back to Sealing. A shot went wide off a leg. Makita knocked it to the corner. Cornwallier's trying to dig it out. They jam there, and the play is stopped. Makach and Pospisil are on the defense for Czechoslovakia. Their forward line is Alinka and the two Hollicks. Ready for the face-off, still in Czechoslovakia territory to our right. They've played 11-22 of this third period. A pass to the blue line goes back to Hollick. Hollick at center ice over to his defenseman, McCott. A, a pass went astray on the left wing. Sealing covered his man, and they roll the puck out at center ice. McCott at center made a pass to the left side to Hollick. Hollick going in with a shot just wide of the corner of the net. It was offside anyway. 11.49 played in the third period. We noticed lately that the Czechoslovakians again have been using the whole ice service. They've been making those long passes, and it's causing Team Canada to do a lot more skating than maybe they expected tonight because they're having to scramble back on many occasions to try and back check on that man with the puck who is standing right across the rink and taking that long pass and taking off. And he's causing some of the Team Canada members to really scramble. The face-off just outside the Canadian blue line. It's back to Bednar. Bednar was stopped. They drive it in to the right here. And Guzella trying to get away. He shot it on the board down the ice. And the Czechoslovakians are clearing at every opportunity. It's called for icing. And they've played 12 minutes and 5 seconds of the third period, meaning they have 7.55 remaining. Czechoslovakia 3, Canada 2. Canada worked into a 2-0 lead in the first period. Czechoslovakia came back with 2 in the second to tie it up, and they took the lead at 2.28 of the third period, Kokta scoring the goal. A slider goes on into the corner. Horoshovsky was blocked. It goes back to the net. Here's right in front, a shot! And a drive there by Dennis Hull went wide of the target. Savard, lot one, it's 
knocked ahead with a glove, carried down by Martinet, and the play was stopped. It's up to center ice again. Across the line, away offside, Dennis Hall went in ahead of Redmond, and it's called back. Frequent changes here almost on every stoppage of play. Play. Had that shot of Dennis Hall gone towards the net, he might have ripped the back of the netting out the way he let it go. But of course it was wide, and this is something that the Team Canada has been doing a lot tonight. Most of their shots have been off the net. They only managed to get three on the net in the second period. Dion is now at center for Canada. Goes where they on the right wing. Peter Mahovlich on the left. It's a lob right in front of the goal. Recovered by Horoshovsky. He cleared the center ice. Park got his stick on it. Horoshovsky moves, number three. He turns back to his own blue line. Played it to his defense player, Bubla. Bubla shot it down the ice. The defense stopped it. Park is trying to pull away from his check. He didn't get very far. They got to center ice. It rolls on to the defense. They lob it right back again. And the Czechoslovakians are... It's carried in on that far side. But Canada recovered quickly. Dion coming back fast at center. Peter Mahovlich trailing. Here's a shot that hit a skate. Then another shot. It's caught by Holacek, who came out of the net. And goals were they spun him around, and that nearly caused a little trouble. It's interesting in this, at this stage of the game right now with six and a half minutes remaining, there's been a complete reversal of form. Team Canada looks as ragged at this stage of the game as the Czechoslovakians did in the first six minutes when they stepped onto the ice. Bill Esposito is going to center ice. Cashman is taking over on the right wing. For Easy is going to be on the left wing. But the two teams seem to have too many players to throw on the ice. Phil Esposito out there again. From the face off, a roller went close there and it shot out to center ice. Ceiling lobbed it ahead. Phil Esposito passing on the wing. Parisi goes into the corner. And he lobbed it high and went over the glass into the crowd. 13.45 of the third period. Phil Esposito has definitely emerged as the leader of Team Canada, and I'm sure right about now there's about 18 or 19 players on that bench that are looking towards him to get Canada back in this game. Canada playing every man up, fighting for that tying goal at least. A roller goes in front. Here's a backhand, a shot. Oh, what, what a save. Phil Esposito tried to center it back. Glenny took his shot wide of the net. There's a slap shot that went over the glass at the back there and went into the crowd. So the play is consistently now in the Czechoslovakian zone. They're doing their best to shoot it away every chance they get. And time is gradually running out they've played 1358 of the third period meaning they have six minutes and two seconds remaining in the game and of course there's no overtime Czechoslovakia leading three to two here's a shot right on Holacek made a great save on that from Glenny on the point then the puck hit the referee right in the face when it went off Cashman's stick the play has been stopped and the uh, official got that right in the mouth and is going to the uh, dressing room. This is game nine with Team Canada from Prague. Now they wear hot pants. I remember when you could get arrested for saying it. Laugh along, sing along with George Kirby and Kirby's clan of kooks on The George Kirby Show, Thursdays on CTV. As wind blows over the water. That's uh, Rudolf Bata over there getting fixed up, as you notice. And then I look at the Canadian bench. They're getting rather anxious there. 
as uh, this may uh, cool uh, somebody out the way they're playing. Uh, the checking is very close. Referee Bata has returned now. They're all set for the face-off, and it goes right back to the Canadian blue line. A forward pass at center to Phil Esposito, who's turning at center. A lob pass after Glennie had handed it to him. He went over the line, couldn't get through. Barisi tried to drive it to the corner. It went over to the li line where Glennie stops it right in front of the Canadian bench. They've played 14-32 of the third period. 3-2 for che Czechoslovakia. Phil Esposito getting ready for the face-off. It rolls back to the defense. Horoshovsky couldn't get it. It's over on this wing. Finally, they bring it out with Nedovetsky closing in with a backhand. Dryden stopped that. Ceiling cleared it back of the goal. Ceiling moves up to the blue line, clear down the right side to Esposito, cruising in from the corner. His backhand went to the far side. Cashman is trying to work from the corner, played it back to the net. It comes out in front, recovered by Nedovansky, and shot out to center ice. They lob it right back in again. They clear it out to center ice. They shoot it in again. This time it was Glenny, and the play is called on the offside. Wayne Cashman's having a little run-in with one of the Czechoslovakian forwards, Stasny, who, of course, has scored both their goals. Cashman took a run at him along the boards, and Stasny came right back at him. It's interesting to notice that Phil Esposito's reputation must have fallen or must have come to Czechoslovakia in advance because they've been covering him exceptionally well in front of the Czechoslovakian net. And he has had few chances to get away good, dangerous shots. Marta, Stasny, and Martinek out there for the Czechs as the puck is recovered by Farda, who's upset by Cornwallier. The puck goes to center ice. Again, Canada take possession with Makita having had the first chance. Now they're coming back with a drive into the corner, taken in on the boards. Savard played it to Makita, who failed to get that puck out, and they drive it right around back of the net. It's cleared into the corner. Canada bottled up for the moment. But four minutes and two seconds left in the game. A pass is up to the blue line. Savard is beaten to the puck. Akach tried to get away, shot it off the board. It's going down the ice. And the Czechoslovakian strictly on the defensive. Makita couldn't control the pass. It's back at center ice to, to Farda. Then over to Akach. They drive it in on the Canadian zone. Canada trying to get out on a pass to Cornwallie. Up to Mahomlich. He's jumped at the defense with Martinek shooting it down the ice. And Mahomlich was slow getting up there as they fell in on the net there. Stasny going with them. Of course, Team Canada definitely isn't out of this game by any means, but the team unity that they worked so hard to develop while in Moscow seems to have abandoned them a little bit here tonight because Although they started very quickly, the Czechoslovakians had a very slow start. And now that the Czechoslovakians are pressing, Team Canada is scrambling a little bit. Clark is down at center ice. Dennis Hall on one wing. And uh, it's shot out to center ice. Redmond on the right wing. Puck goes back to Park on the defense. It's lobbed out to center ice. Dennis Hall couldn't get anywhere on his try. Now it's Park trying to get that puck out. Talon is on the defense with him. A lob pass to Clark. Clark cleared too far for Redmond. And it's shot right back again. The checking very close. Talon shot it over on the wing. Dennis Hull missed it. It's cleared out to center ice. Then back to the their own zone. Horoshovsky pass over out of the far wing. A long shot is off the boards. Cleared back of the net. 17-26 played of the third period. Halleck broke up the Canadian rush. 
and the Czechoslovakians are checking fiercely. It's over on that far wing at center ice. The shot goes into the Canadian zone, and the Canadian players look tired as Park goes back to get it. Park tried to play it on the wing. He was stopped. They carry right on. Clark going up over the line. Gets the pass to Redmond. Into the corner for Clark. He centers it back to the blue line. Here's a shot by Dennis Hall. And Holacek grabbed that one and fell out of the net. With less than two minutes remaining. A great save here by Holacek on a high-rising flat shot that could have caused him a lot of trouble. He gets well up, gets the puck well up into his body and carries the puck off the net. They've played 18.03 on the third period. Czechoslovakia three, Canada two. And the checking is very, very close. The Canadian team having difficulty getting any leeway. Bill Esposito coming back at center. Cashman is going to be out there with Parisi. Park is playing up. Gets the pass back to the blue. They're keeping it in. Slides to the... To catch, but... Out here's a drive that bounces. To relieve the pressure with Cashman playing back to Park. Park number four. Was offside. 1843 of the third period. Three to two. First period. And 17 seconds left in the game. And it all hinges on whether Canada can get that drive going in the last moment to pull this game out of the fire. Bill Esposito at center, Clark Y.A. Over the line. They shoot it on the boards and out to center ice. It's a forward pass to Park. Goes over on that far wing. And Canada trying to get organized. Savard played it on the right side to Esposito. Esposito gets over the line. Lost the puck and they shoot it out. 19.08 played. Less than a minute remaining. Canada trying to get organized again for another drive. They stopped before they got started. Savard plays it over to Parisi. Parisi at center. He couldn't get far. It's over the line. Now the goalkeeper drives his out of the net. Canada playing six attackers. They're all in the Czechoslovakian zone. They shoot it out. Less than 25 seconds remaining in the game. And Canada's attacking with six players. Just a reminder to people in Toronto, due to security reasons, the officials at Toronto's airport have requested most strongly that you must not go to the airport tomorrow afternoon. You can see all the Team Canada players at City Hall at the Civic Reception around 6.30 in the evening. They've played 19.35 of this third period. Czechoslovakia still leading 3-2. Dryden is out of the net, has been for about eight seconds. And the Canadian team have six attackers out there. Bill Esposito, who's worked himself into exhaustion, is getting relief. Cardoye is remaining out there with Clark, Frank Mahovlich, and Frank Mahovlich goes to the bench. So they have to try to do the keep out there. What Team Canada must do with only 25 seconds to go, they must win the draw, so they have to send the man out there they think that can do that best. And it looks like it will probably be Bobby Clark. And after getting the draw, they must establish control to get that one chance to tie this game up. All ready for a very important face-off. The puck rolls to one side of the net. They jam in on the board. Canada recovers. Park makes a shot. Pass to the corner to Clark. Clark presented right in front of the net and scramble. And they're all around the net. But 
Goalkeeper Holacek held it out. This puck bounces up, it's deflected up, and Holacek has trouble getting his eye on it, but he does manage to, and he smothers a good Canadian scoring chance. That was a close goal after 19 minutes and 47 seconds. Park was underneath the goalkeeper in the final as they scrambled all around the net. Still six attackers. Canadian net is empty. Well, Foster, with only 13 seconds left to go, there's not much left to say for Canada, except possibly a prayer. Bill Esposito is over at the bench, and now it's coming out. This will be the final test here with 13 seconds left. They're lined up inside the Czechoslovakian zone. The puck comes back to the board. Park took his shot and bounces off a leg. Park gets it again. And right in front of that is scramble. They're all around us. They score! They've scored and tied it up. What a fighting hockey team this Canadian group are. From a wild scramble around the net, they knocked it in there with four seconds left in the game. Well, Foster, someone must have been listening because... Team Canada with their backs against the wall. Jean-Paul Parisi parked right in front of the net. The scramble after the first shot, and he puts the backhand, and he makes sure. Jean-Paul Parise. And somebody up there must love us, because we've come back in two games when it looked like we had no prayer in the dying seconds. Four seconds left, and Parisi was standing there with a crowd of Canadian players. They all took a whack at it. But Parisi was the one who tapped it in after about three chances by other players all around the net. And so it's a tie score, 3-3. Four seconds left. The puck goes back at center from the face of. Three seconds left in the game. Parisi has tied it up for Canada at 19.56. And as you recall, Canada won against the Soviets in that last game, the eighth game of the series, scoring the winning goal in 34 seconds from the faceoff. The puck comes back to the blue line. There's the siren. And Canada came through there with a tying goal after the cause seemed to be lost when they were outplayed in the second period. They had an easy time in the first, worked into a 2 nothing lead. Then the Czechoslovakians came back in the second period to score two, and then took the lead early in the third period when Kotka scored at 2.28. Then Parisi got the tying goal at 19.56, and it ended in a 3-3 tie. With, with the final score, Canada three, and Czechoslovakia.